welcome back to NixTube. Today I'd like to spend some time and talk about image tracing because you can use images that you find on the internet in Illustrator by turning them into vectors. So I've got a variety of images here that I, I would like to use, let's say, in a logo later on, um, maybe for a place called Bow Wow Playground. And so I'm going to talk you through how each of these photos are appropriate or not are appropriate or what you could do with each one to get it to a point where you can use it. So I'm going to start with this one right here. Um, now this is a photograph, right? So you can see it kind of looks pixelated here in Illustrator. There's two places that I can access the image trace icons. It's going to come up here in the control bar, and it's also going to be in my properties panel. Once I select that shape, let me select it away, see how it kind of went away. Once I select that image, it tells me that I have an image in here, it is embedded right now, and that I can image trace it if I want. So I'm actually going to use it here in the properties panel because I, I, it's just easier that way. So I'm going to go into the image trace. I'm going to click on image trace here, and it's going to give me some options. Now this is a photograph in a pretty high fidelity photograph, meaning there's a lot of colors in there. So I'm going to go ahead and try that one, high fidelity photo. So essentially what I want Illustrator to do is break this down into shapes and colors. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of shapes and a lot of colors in there. So I'm actually going to click on this item right here, and this is my image trace panel. And when I click on that, I can minimize or I can experiment with the amount of colors that it's actually showing me. So I'm going to go way, way down, right? Because for a logo, we want our colors to be very simplistic. So I'm going to go down as low as I can, actually. I'm going to leave it like that. After you image trace something in Illustrator, you then need to go in and expand that so that I can break it down into paths that I can modify or change. So I'm going to click on expand and now I've broken it down. The entire image is selected. So if I go to, like, I can't select a certain point of it, I have to deselect. So you can click anywhere in the background to deselect. Command Shift A is also the keyboard shortcut to deselect. And now I can go in and start modifying this image. Now, it was one piece. If I take the black selection arrow, it's going to always select it as one piece. If I take the white selection arrow, deselect, Command Shift A, um, I could select individual shapes and go through and delete them. So what I'm doing now is I'm going through, I'm deleting these shapes that are around, like as, as if I wanted to isolate the dog. Um, I could try other things too. I could take my magic wand and say, okay, you know what? I want all this brownish color to go away. Oops, I got too much of the dog there. Um, I could even go through and I could click on it and I can say, let me grab my eraser tool and start erasing from that. Oops, you know, I, I kind of messed that up. So really though, the, the whole point of this one little exercise to use this photo is to impress upon you that you should not use photographs high fidelity photographs, lots of color pixel information in Illustrator with the image trace option. That's not how that was designed to be used. All right, let me move on to this one. All right, so I'm going to click on the dog, right? Brings up my image trace. How about I use this one just so you can see. If I click it on, if I click on it, it's going to bring me my default. Let me command Z goes back. Um, I don't want to do that because it's going to turn into black and white. And this has three colors in it. So if I click on this little arrow, I can choose three colors. Now, let me jump back over here really quick. See that image trace in my properties? That's what the properties looks like. If I go and I image trace from here, it will give me my options three colors in the same way, right? Um, so that just broke it down into three colors. That looks pretty good. I'm going to expand this. See, expand, expand. They're in both places. Expand that. Um, I'm going to click deselect, right? Then go grab the white and delete it. That worked pretty well. How about this? Ooh, we have a problem. Okay, so the reason why this didn't work is because there are little bits that are not connected here. So I could go through and I could, you know, take the time to fix it up. But really, at the end of the day, there's a thousand pictures of dogs on the Internet. And why would I waste my time with that? So let's move on to this dog right here. If I click on this dog, this is a great image to use for image tracing. I'm going to click on image trace to isolate it. That kind of broke it up. I lost a little bit of his eye, but that's okay. Then I'm going to expand it. Now, I was able to use the default, the image trace icon that was up here, because it was. It, this is a very simple trace. So I, I can go in now and get rid of that white. And that was that easy, right? I got that white. Now I could color the dog in. I could click on the inside color, right? Here's my color here. Here are my properties. I could change the fill of the dog if I wanted to make them brown. I did not select all of them, so I'd have to go and get these other little bits. The other thing that I could do here, let me go back to him being white, is I can go and select the whole dog. Black arrow always selects the whole dog. That's why this one, I only got the white inside there. Um, black arrow, select the whole dog. Um, there is a tool in here. Some of you have been wanting to paint bucket, right? There is one called the live paint bucket. 
The live paint bucket will actually work pretty well if you have an areas that are completely enclosed by the line. So this would work pretty well. Right now i got to pick a color. Let me pick a color here. Let's get brown again. And if I take that live paint bucket, I should be able to click, click. Um, Illustrator will define those, those areas that I can go in there and use. And there we go. There's my dog. Um, this is a great example or a great piece for me to use the uh, puppet warp. So I'm going to jump over and try out this puppet warp here. Um, and it's with the free transform tool. So I'm going to grab the puppet warp. Illustrator is going to assign points to this dog. And so what we did in class is, is kind of show how you can get this dog to be in a different direction, right? Or in a different direction. Yeah, in a different uh, stance here. So the thing that we played with is trying to get the dog to sit on his legs. Now, every pin that's in here is going to hold it up. So if I set a pin, I could set a pin that would allow me to move the image around as well. Um, you can get rid of pins, but I want to set them up so it looks like he's kind of sitting on his, his bum here. And there we go. When you get this rotation, you can rotate the head around in that way as well. So that's kind of a fun way to modify or change something once you've kind of drawn it in there. All right, so last one. Um, all, I always go to a silhouette. Silhouette's a great image to use in a logo. So I'm going to click on it. Again, this is just black and white, so I'm just going to go image trace right here. It's at the top. Then I'm going to expand it. I'm going to take my white arrow. I'm going to select the dog that I would like to use. So I'm gonna, let's say I'm going to use this dog right here. I'm going to take this dog. I'm going to separate him from the rest. I'm actually going to pull him all the way off my document, and then I'm going to zoom out. Because all this other stuff is garbage, I want to just work with this one dog right here. I'm actually going to take the white arrow, select everything, and delete it. Now, the reason why I use it, I'm going to go back for a second. The reason why I use the white arrow, not the black arrow, is because technically this dog is still attached to this document. If I click on it, you see it, it selects it all at once. So if I did something like this, it just got that dog. I have to use the white arrow so I can isolate that dog away from the rest. Now, once you have something live trace, remember in Illustrator, when you change the size of something, always hold shift on the keyboard, grab it from the corner. Otherwise, you run the risk of it not being proportional. Now that I've traced something, now this is a dog, right? It doesn't really look like a dog. So I might have to go in and make modifications. The best tool to go in, I mean, there's a variety of tools you can use to make modifications, but I love that curvature tool because I can go in there and I could say, okay, let me go in. I'm going to pull his nose out. Let me define like a snout here. Uh, maybe I want his mouth to be open, so I'm going to kind of pull that out a little bit, give him a little bit of a neck. I could pull this out a little bit and kind of, oops. Separate it that way. There we go. Now he's got a little mouth. Maybe I want to round out his ears a little bit. I can go in that with the, that curvature tool. The curvature tool adds points. See, I clicked and I added a point. And then it allows me to modify the path as well. Oh, his head got a little funky there. Um, but I can go in there and I can play around with modifying the shape. Like this ear, let's like make it look like that ear is going behind on the other side. The other thing he's missing here is a tail. So let's say I did this and I did this and I went right in the center. I went, oops. Do that. There we go. And he's got a little tail now that I can go in and, and, and help him. Well, it's a little high. That tail's a little high. But you, it's all modifiable, right? You can go in there and modify the whole thing. Now, what's fun about this is that I could even jump over, grab my puppet warp, and kind of mess around with this guy as well. What do I want to bark, bark, bark? What do I want him to look like, right? Okay, so there's image trace. Good images, bad images, the good, the bad, the, and the ugly. Thanks for watching.